and I'd be taking photos of these things and people would come out of their shops and be like, what are you doing? Why are you staring at my wall? Like it's, you know, it's a laundromat or it's a, you know, we sell used cars, like what are you doing? And just thinking that I'm casing the joint or looking a bit dodgy about it. And then I explained it to them and they just couldn't get their heads around it. Like, well, it's just a sign, dude. Like, <laughs> they don't understand it. Hi, my name's Will Lyons and I'm a sign writer and decorative glass artist. I run my own business by the name of Lyons & Co. So we do a whole range of hand-painted signage and decorative glass art, from a more commercial side of things to more personalised uh, commissioned pieces. So I guess early 20s that are definitely fell in love with lettering and sort of didn't know so much about it that I sort of started to explore and go down this, this wild path of, of something that I had no idea about how intense it was and how much there was actually involved in it, sort of behind the scenes and, and how everything was sort of created and how much structure there was involved, even in things that looked so loose. And I guess in that research, uh, trying to get into a sort of more lettering and stuff like that and understand what it was all about, I came across this website called The Letterheads. They were all sign writers and it was sort of an experience for them to get together at sort of each person's house or workshop or whatever and, and drink some beers and kind of hang out and swap stories and trade secrets and stuff like that. And, it's, and when I first saw that website, I saw a couple of glass signs in there and my jaw just dropped and was like, oh, like what is that? Like, I couldn't even fathom how it was made, uh, what it was, what the materials were that we used. I knew that it was, it was made in glass and that it had gold leaf. I didn't even know what gold leaf was then really. Something I found really beautiful and enjoyed being in that sort of creative space where it was the smell of the timber and the smell of sort of wax that they'd use or an oil or getting to, you know, bang my fingers with a hammer trying to hit nails and stuff like that. So I always I think that sort of started the idea of, of a creative process and not necessarily the finished product. I guess the business sort of started from, from working on stuff for my, for my own personal benefit and dealing with that side of things and kind of transitioned into becoming a more commercial side of things. It's still very much for me a personal involvement in everything that I do and, and my drive comes from creating something that someone else will get the same, I guess, amazement and beauty out of. On those first trips to New York that really blew me away and I remember my dad sort of when I was about would have been in year two at primary school and he used to travel a bunch for work, him coming back from, from New York. I remember him saying to me, oh, you'd love New York, and I asked him why, and he just sort of said, I just have this feeling that you'd really love it. I don't think it was sort of until I actually got there and set foot sort of on the ground and it was in summer and the, the heat and the smell and stuff that the gravity of how awesome it was like really hit me and that sort of almost imposing but not in a bad way. Just so in your face with these amazing old buildings and lettering and stuff and I think it was more that saturation of just, you know, it being everywhere and for me every bit of it was like amazing. And that sort of really sparked my interest in, in specifically the glass work because for me it was just something I'd never seen before and was so beautiful that it was I really had to find out exactly what it was and get into it. So this one would probably have sort of started at a loose idea, looser than this, so it might be sort of just a quick five or ten minutes, I might sit down and I sort of thought I would write out all my details of exactly what needs to be included in there, so it'd be the 50, you know, this is for a 50th wedding anniversary, so I'd probably put the importance on the 50 as opposed to other stuff, all of these other things are sort of smaller details, but I'd sort of start to work that out. There's something nice and, and freer about being able to work with a pencil like this and sort of get my ideas out onto paper as opposed to trying to use a, a mouse to figure it all out. And then I use this machine over here called an Electro Pounce. It basically creates tiny little holes or wherever I, I draw this thing and then I dust this with charcoal to get my design. So it really depends on, on what project I'm working on and stuff, but there, there's such a number of different tools that are used in the decorative glass process. The other probably most common thing I use in the decorative glass stuff is 
actual gold leaf itself. Just ensures that the glass is absolutely clean so that there's no oils or finger residue or anything like that. As the gold dries, it dries to a mirrored finish and then this black line work being so tight has been screen printed over the top. I guess some people do a sport or you know have their different hobbies and stuff. For me it's always been uh, a definite place that I can sort of retreat to in my own head, almost like a meditation when I'm actually doing the work.